If you're watching this video, you're probably planning a trip to the Ocean Riviera Paradise. You've seen several video reviews on YouTube, all the terrific reviews they have on TripAdvisor, and you've seen how affordably priced this place is. After all that, you've gotta be wondering, is it worth it? In this video, I'm gonna tell you all about the Ocean Riviera Paradise, and of course reveal the deep, dark secrets for why this place is so affordably priced, and there is a reason for it. Just checked in at El Beso, the adults only side of the Ocean Riviera Paradise. And let me tell you, I'm impressed. It felt like we were on vacation right away. The staff was hospitable. All the guests seemed to be having a good time because they did a strategic job of putting the lobby right next to a bar. So it always feels warm and lively in there. This little wristband doubles as my room's key card. So when I want to check in, I just beep. Checking in at the Ocean Riviera Paradise is a good start to your trip. One thing that should be noted when you check in at El Beso or the Ocean Riviera Paradise, make sure you do the pre-registration email. Uh, they send that to you a few days before you're supposed to arrive. It will save you a lot of time at your check-in. And secondly, these little key cards that they give you, the wristband, as well as the towel cards, they are extremely expensive if you lose them. It was $100 per item if you did not return it at checkout. Just make sure you keep up with it because again, it's extremely expensive. at El Beso is stunning. I mean, and it can only be described as stunning because of the price that you pay. You wouldn't expect to get all that you get. You see right away, you've got a closet, you've got your bathroom, there's a little peeper's window so you can look into the bathroom for whatever reason, I don't know, but it's there. You've got your bed, you've got your TV, and then you've got a whole living area, which the size of this room is incredible, especially considering it's one of the most affordable resorts in all of Playa del Carmen. We haven't had a chance to go out onto the balcony, but that's there as well. There's two lounge chairs that overlook the adults only pool. The pool has not been noisy during the day. It was definitely lively, but once we close the door to our uh, patio, you can't really hear it. We're gonna go to a restaurant called Amaranto. This was the lunch buffet and pretty much the only option that's open right now. The expectations were not very high for this. And there's nothing worse than going to eat and having to eat bad food, especially when you're hungry. And they did not disappoint. Food was phenomenal. I'll tell you about all the choices they had. There was Italian food, Mexican food, Chinese food. There was a salad bar, fruit bar. There was a dessert bar, the breakfast area. There was a bread area. The food is on point. So I was really excited about that. Man, that food was delicious. One opportunity I will call out for Amaranto's lunch hour, there's no drink buffet. So you can't just walk up, refill your drink with water or juice or whatever it is you have. Our server came by once when we first sat down and we never saw him again. I mean, we were there for at least an hour, if not more than that, and he didn't come by. So the only thing we had to drink with plates and plates of food was the memory of what water tastes like. So yeah, that was a bit of a miss. Honestly, I think that's just a one-off. I have high expectations for the food at this resort now, because if the buffet is that good at an all-inclusive resort, just imagine how good the a la carte food is. So for dinner on our first night, we made reservations to eat at the steakhouse. Our server came right away. He took our orders. We already knew what we wanted. We had white corn soup. My wife had the mahi mahi filet while I had the ribeye steak. For dessert, I had a New York cheesecake and she had a uh, lemon cake. The lemon cake and the New York cheesecake, nah. You, you, you don't need dessert. I will say the food's been really good at this resort, but that dessert was a swing and a miss. Hard. I didn't need it. But everything else, wait a minute, let me not say that. Also the mahi mahi filet, no. Don't order fish at the steakhouse. Just, just don't do it. But my steak, very delicious. It's not Ruth Chris or Maestro's for being an all-inclusive steak. 
It was very well seasoned, delicious flavor. I, I have nothing bad to say about that steak. It was delicious. Uh, the vegetables were, you know, again, okay. That sangria though, it was hidden. It was, it was the one. Takeaways from dinner. Order steak when you go to the steakhouse. That's what they probably specialize at. And that's why the name of the restaurant is literally Steakhouse. So order steak when you go there. All right, so it's day two of our trip to Playa del Carmen, staying at the Ocean Riviera Paradise in beautiful El Beso, the adults only portion of the resort. So we just got back. We took a tour with the H10 Club to find out more about their uh, timeshare offering. So bear this in mind. You schedule a tour to go learn about some timeshare to get the free gift. You only do it because you thought that the weather was gonna be bad. You let your salesperson know, I'm not interested in buying, I'm just looking for some information and of course the free gift. And instead of spending 90 minutes in the tour, you spend three hours and at the end of the day, you can't use your $80 voucher anyway because the person you're supposed to use it with is never there. So in a nutshell, that's how the H10 tour went for us. I think the offer they were offering was something like 25 years for $50,000, which gave us two weeks worth of stay at the Ocean Properties and some discounts at their affiliate hotels. We would not get the all-inclusive, so we'd still have to pay for food. And of course, the fact that it's a 25 year contract for a vacation property. So we sat through the tour, of course, and we listened to the sales pitch, but no dice. After we spent our morning with the folks with H10 and Privilege, it was time to go check out the beach and the ocean. I gotta say, the, the pools are pretty dope. I really like how they have five pool locations. Uh, the beach itself, well, we'll talk about the beach in a second, but the pools are pretty awesome. There's DJs constantly playing music or getting you involved in different games. There's of course a swim up bar at each and every pool. Yeah, the, the pool scene is pretty dope here. So we're out here checking out the pools and it's starting to rain. The weather has changed. It's nice because it was projected to rain uh, at 10 a.m. But it didn't start until I think it's like 2.30 right now, I wanna say. Uh, so we got a few extra hours of sun, checked out the pools, they were pretty dope. But now we're gonna head back to the room and probably rest until dinner time, so. Man. So we finally got a chance to walk the entire grounds here at Ocean Riviera Paradise in Playa del Carmen. Let me tell you, this is an absolutely stunning resort. Uh, we made it down to the beach area, which admittedly the beach is not the greatest beach in the world, but it makes up for it with five pools, with lively atmosphere, with constant entertainment. If you decide to walk the beach, there will be people out there who try to sell you any and everything, whatever you can think of, they sell it on that beach. Um, typically after you say no twice, honestly, they're pretty respectful and they'll leave you alone. After we walked the beach, we came back to the property and it had been a long day. So we went and got some coffee from Mike's Coffee. I've got to say, I've never had coffee like that. That was some good bean, pause. I have my coffee, got a little pick me up and then we went back to the pool area. Over here at the, the El Beso side, the adults only pool, it was popping, there was a volleyball game, drinks were flowing, everybody was having a good time. So we just spent the afternoon hanging out at the pool until it started to rain. We did get to check out the snack stand uh, at El Beso, right by the El Beso pool. They have a, uh, a private snack stand where they serve burgers and fries and uh, you know, a little surf and turf. I will say the food at the poolside snack bar not the greatest food we've had. We just ate there and you know, whatever, let it go. But we're back here in the room. I'm gonna lay down for a little bit. And then tonight we're eating at the Italian restaurant, La Locanda. It's the Italian restaurant here at Ocean Riviera Paradise. And it is delicious. For dinner, I had the tomato basil cream. 
Uh, it had three or four croutons in it, which were just absolute deliciousness. They kind of sopped up all the flavor of the basil. Um, so when you bit into them, it wasn't quite crunchy. It was a little bit softer, but the flavor was locked in. That tomato basil was so good. For my main entree, I had the lasagna bolognese. The lasagna was a bit cheesy. I'd say it was maybe a cut above a Stouffer's lasagna. The specialty drink was called a pink gin. Strawberry gin and coconut milk. And those were the two main ingredients. Man, I'm, I'm telling you, it, it'll sit you down, but you'll have a good time getting there. I really think the majority of the value that you get from staying at Ocean Riviera Paradise is in the food. Oh my God. Here, try this with the crouton. Just try this bite. It's a crouton, right? That means something. Yeah. For tonight's entertainment, we made our way over to the theater where they featured dances from around the Americas. They have a nice, beautiful stage, comfortable chairs in there, plenty of room for, I think, like four or 500 people. But the show, it was about what you'd expect from an all-inclusive. You know, they all, for the most part, have some of the same things. Tonight was the dance night. My wife, totally into it, enjoyed herself. So the entertainment, again, I, I think it's what you'd expect, but not bad. All right, so it's day three or two, depending on how you look at it. We're headed to breakfast this morning. Got up early, got to see the sunrise. It was beautiful over the ocean. Uh, but later today, we'll be headed to Ishkade or x -Garret. If you're interested in that, go check out our next video on Ishkade. We'll show you everything we did and what we thought. All right, for now, I'm out. So we're back from breakfast, the morning of our second or third day, depending on how you look at it. And I think I'm starting to piece together what's going on with this hotel. Like, why is it so cheap, but still has pretty good reviews? And stay with me here because it's very subtle. I think what this hotel does really well is food. Anytime it's time to eat, this is a five-star, all-inclusive, one of the best places you could choose to be. The flip side of that is anytime you're not eating, this place is, just a place. When you're at the restaurant, staff's friendly, they're warm, they'll speak with you, you know, what you'd expect. When you're just in the resort and you need to know where the bathroom is, they're like, oh yeah, it's over there, versus, oh, it's over there, let me show you. Or, oh, it's over there, go take a look at the map, it'll lead you to where you're trying to go, so on and so forth. Um, and initially I thought maybe it might be a language barrier, but it's not that. One of the other cons that I've, I've noticed, this all-inclusive houses up to a thousand people. And so with so many different guests, at the hotel, it's really hard to build even a small sense of community. Like I know it's an all-inclusive resort and you're not gonna see these people ever again, but at a resort where there's maybe three to 500 guests, it's smaller, obviously. So you see the same people more frequently and you're more likely to build relationships. But with this amount of people, the diverse group, because you have people not just from the United States, but primarily from Mexico and also other parts of the world here, we're all kind of disconnected and separated. Um, and then also you have adults, couples who came, and you have families, and that's another kind of barrier. So it's really big, but it makes it feel separated, like we're not having a shared vacation experience, you know what I mean? The other thing I think this hotel does, which is kind of a, a knock against it, it really feels a bit salesy. I shouldn't even say a bit. This hotel is salesy. What they do is they price the resort low, and then once you're here, they want to upsell you. So everywhere you turn, they're gonna advertise the H10 Club, they're gonna advertise privilege. Everywhere you look, there's a sign for that so that you can sign up and buy more things. On the resort, everywhere you go, there's opportunities for you to purchase jet skis or parasailing or whatever it is adventure you wanna do. And initially when I, I saw it, I thought, oh, that's convenient. They've got one in the lobby. They've got a stand right when you come out of the lobby. They've got another stand right outside the main buffet. But then they've got stands over by the pool bars and they've got a stand right outside the beach. I mean, they're not like hounding you for it, but they're constantly trying to strike up a random conversation with the intent 
to sell you on something. You know, overall, I think it's a really good resort if you can look past all of the upsells. The pros, they've got good food. Blue Moon, the French restaurant, great food. We also ate at Margarita, not so great. And Pez Bella, which is the, uh, the seafood restaurant, they've got really good food. Uh, it's really clean. Their rooms are large and it's very affordable. I, I still think we got a heck of a lot of value for the price that we paid and I'm not mad at that at all. So the question we've all been waiting to have answered, is it worth it? If you've been watching the video, you probably know the answer for me by now and the answer is not really. I probably wouldn't come back to the Ocean Riviera Paradise as a couple. However, if I were traveling with my children or in a larger group for a wedding or a bachelor party or whatever the case may be, if I'm going in a group or with the family, yes. This is the resort I wanna be at. You bring your own sense of community with you. The property's clean. They've got nice large rooms. They've got a, a wide variety of food to accommodate all kind of taste. And it's not far from downtown Playa del Carmen. So yeah, it, it's definitely right if you're traveling as a family or a larger group. I probably would suggest finding another location if you're going as a couple. If you enjoyed this review video and you want to see more like it, go check out the video that I plan to do on Ishkadet if I actually do it. And of course, if you got any sort of value out of this video, please be sure to drop a like so that other people can find it as well. Uh, and until next time, tip your waitresses. Or don't, because tip culture's gotten out of hand. Anyway, peace out.